Hi, welcome back to my channel. And for today's video, I have with me the Aglonema fish eye, by the way. And for today's video, we will be uh, continuing with what we have started on the linear transformation that we have done already on the previous video. So this time, we're going to discuss the theories and properties of linear transformation with corresponding examples. So for those who are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe so that you'll be updated on a lot of videos that I'll be uploading soon. And uh, for those who had been here for a very long time, thank you so much for your undying support. Okay, so let's start now with the first theorem. Suppose that you have a linear transformation uh, from V to W. So suppose your you have suppose F from V to W is a linear transformation. Then f of 0 is actually 0. So your 0 here is actually coming from your domain, and this here is coming from your codomain. So that will be the first theorem. It says here that um, the linear transformation sends the identity element of its domain to the identity element of the codomain. Okay, so to show the proof of this, I'm going to show you the outline. So if you have um, f of 0b, technically that's the same as f of 0b plus 0b, right? So that means uh, two zeros is the same as one zero. So in this case here, since f is a linear transformation, I can separate them. So I have um, f of 0v plus f of 0v. Okay. Okay, so meaning to say that I would have this um, equality here as this. Okay, now um, I can add both sides by negative f of 0, v. And the fact that um, if you have f of 0, b plus the, the, the negative of f of 0, v is equal to 0, w, then you would have this equality here. That is, um, we have this. So therefore, we have proven the claim now. Now, this theorem is actually useful in the sense that um, this is actually used to determine um, if a function is not a linear transformation without actually explicitly checking on the conditions for the definition of the linear transformation. Meaning to say that if, let's say, um, you have a function from V to W, so if it, sat if it doesn't satisfy here, then automatically that uh, function is not a linear transformation. Now, if you can recall back to the previous that we have, um, this f maps from R to R, sending x uh, to e to the x, this is not a linear transformation. Because, of course, it fails to hold on the condition 1. But technically, um, you don't need to double check on that because we have this power pro theorem that we have discussed already that um, for us to identify if the function is not a linear transformation, you just have to follow it by this simple rule. Now, if you double check um, f of 0 here, so if you're going to substitute 0 to x, um, that would imply e to the 0 and that's equal to 1. So technically, your f of 0 is equal to 1, so which is not equal to the identity element of your codomain here. So this is already enough to show that this given function is not a linear transformation. That's it. So by this uh, given theorem and example, we will have to establish our um, basic remark. Our basic remark is just simply by observation of what we have done earlier. So if, um, given that you have a function from V to W and um, F of 0, V is not the same as 0, W, then technically F is not linear transformation. Transfer okay. But... If f of 0 equals uh, 0, w, it doesn't mean that um, 
this already shows that our f is a linear transformation. This only simply tells us that our f might be a linear transformation. But you have to double check also the other two conditions based on the definition of the linear transformation. But again, when this is not equal to the identity element of the codomain, it simply tells us that you don't need to evaluate explicitly on the two conditions for the definition of the linear transformation because it is enough already to show that this given f is not a linear transformation. So if you have any questions or doubts or clarification, please comment down there so that I would know. Okay, to support on that claim, because again, we have already a remark that when um, the f of zero is not equal to the identity element of the codomain, then technically that's not a linear transformation, but the converse doesn't necessarily hold. Now, to show on that, let's consider this. Um, f of r here maps to, to r, um, sending x to um, x cube. If you can recall back on the previous video that um, this is not a linear transformation, but observe that f of zero is actually zero. So meaning to say that for you to be able to identify whether the function is a linear transformation or not, you have to double check that f of zero um, will not be equal to the identity element. If um, it's not equal, then we're done. If it's equal, we're not yet done. We have to double check the two conditions and we have to find out if which of those conditions the f fails to hold. That's it. So again, we have the definition for a linear transformation uh, and uh, we will give emphasis on the first condition that if you have um, u plus b here, uh, you would get f of u plus f of b. Now in this case, this simply tells us that the linear transformation preserves addition. Now our next uh, result or claim here will say that the linear transformation will also preserve subtraction. Here is our next claim. Let f maps from u to v. Ah, sorry. Uh, I'll replace that u to w, uh, um, v to w, be a linear transformation. Then f of u minus v here is actually equal to f of u minus f of b. So aside from preserving addition for the linear transformation, linear transformation also preserves subtraction. So to show uh, that this is true, we're going to prove on this claim here by this. So I'm going to show the outline only. So if you might notice, um, u, um, u here and v are elements of b. Now, um, if u and b here are elements of v, and remember v is a vector, then, um, then u minus v is actually element of v. Okay, so that means it's uh, close for a vector. Now, if you would have f of u minus v plus v, so technically uh, this is the same as f of v. Okay, now I would have um, f of u minus v plus f of v simply because our f here is a linear transformation. So by condition one, this will hold. Now, so... Uh, I'm sorry, this is not V, this is U. So, I would get this equality. So, F of U equals F of U minus V plus F of V. So, add both sides by negative F of B. So, I would get F of U minus F of B equals F of U minus V. So, that will prove about the claim that the um, linear transformation will also preserve the subtraction. That's it. Okay, so our next theorem here will also give you the idea that if we know the image of a basis for our domain under a linear transformation, we can find also the image of any element of that domain. Okay, so here, um, we have this theorem. 
let f maps from b to w be a linear transformation and let v be any arbitrary element of b so that means it's an arbitrary vector and let the set containing v1 up to bn be a basis for v okay then f of b here is determined by f of b1 up until f of bn so we need to say that again um this theorem will only tell us that if you know the image of the basis for that vector which is we're referring to the domain then uh, technically we um if we talk about under the linear transformation then we can find the image of any element from that domain okay so we will double check that by a proof whether this claim here is actually true or not okay so let v here be b and set since um this v1 to vn is the basis for b then there exist scalars a1 a2 up to an and those are coming from your f such that your vector b here can be expressed as a linear combination of these vectors coming from the basis with together with the scalars so i have and bn okay now i'm gonna take the f of both sides here so i would get f of b this is equal to f of a1 v1 plus up until a n v n now remember that f here is a linear transformation so by uh, property number one i would have f of a1 v1 plus up until f of a n v n and um again um by property number two of the definition i would get remember that a i's here are actually scalars so i get a1 f of b1 plus up until a n f of b n so by this equ equation it simply tells us that the f of b is actually now determined by the um, f of b1, f of b2 up until f of bn. So therefore, this uh, theorem simply tells us that the image of the basis for the given domain under a linear transformation can be determined by the image of any element from those domain. From those uh, domain. That's it. Okay, so let's consider an example for that theorem. Um, let our T here maps pro, um, from F1 square bracket X to F1 square bracket X. And our T here is a linear transformation. Um, we define here so such that um, T of x plus 1 here is 2 and t of x minus 1 here is x okay so the question is we will find t of 3x plus 1 okay so we will solve on this one here so so we will use that theorem now note that um x plus one and um x minus one here this set is a basis for f1 of x okay 
also we can write 3x plus 1 here we can write that as um, 2 times x plus 1 here plus x minus 1 okay so therefore solving for uh, t of 3x plus 1 here um, I would get t of uh, 2 x plus 1 plus x minus 1 so remember t here is a linear transformation so I would get 2 of t x plus 1 plus t of x minus 1 so we have the assumption here that our t of x plus 1 is 2 and t of x minus 1 is x here so I'd get uh, 2 times 2 plus x here so our final answer would be x plus 4 so therefore t of 3x plus 1 is actually x plus 4 that's it okay so we will consider another example here um, given that you have um, a mapping from r2 square bracket x to r3 so be linear transformation in such a way that you define f of 1 minus t you have an order uh, 3 2 pole um, 3 0 1 and um, we have uh, f of t we have an order 3 pole of uh, 1 1 1 and f of t squared it's um, ordered 3 pole 1 negative 1 0 so we are looking to solve for f of 1 plus 40 plus 40 squared okay now um so we will solve on this one okay note that um this one here one okay sorry 1 minus t and you have t and you have t squared is a basis for r2 of t okay so since this set is actually a basis then we let um scalars a1 a2 a3 in r such that we would have this equality here uh, 1 plus 40 plus 40 squared that's equal to a1 of 1 minus t plus a2 t plus a3 t squared okay you can simply verify that um, your a1 here is 1 your um, a2 here is 5 and um, your a3 here is 4 so by that um taking the f of both sides so i have f of 1 plus 40 plus 40 squared um i would get f of um how would i do this that is um my a my a1 is 1 so i have f of 1 uh, minus t plus uh, 5t plus um, my a3 is 4 so I have 4t squared okay now um, this is a linear transformation so I would I can separate them so 1 minus t plus 5f of t plus 4f of t squared and then uh, my f of 1 minus t as defined we have a uh, 301 so this is um ordered triple 301 plus 5 my f of t here as defined as ordered triple 111 and um my f of t squared as defined um this is 1 negative 1 0 okay so therefore i would get um 301 plus 5 5 5 plus 4 negative 4 0 and finally I would get an ordered triple 12 1 6 that's it okay so we have already shown that the image of a basis for a vector v under a uh, linear transformation can be identified or determined uh, via the image of any element of v so in this case we will define a definition here that um, home of vw over f um, this is actually 
the collection of all linear transformation from V to W here. And then, by this definition, we can introduce another theorem. So the set home of VW over F of linear transformation, so this is the set of linear transformation from V to W is a vector space Okay, um, such big vector space under addition of functions and scalar multiplication of functions. Okay, so let's consider an example here. Um, if you might notice, the set here, Fm, um, wherein um, this is R to R, such that F of M of X is the same as Mx, where your M here is in R. This is actually a subset of the collection of all linear transformations from R to R over R. Okay. Now, the question that, is, that we arise here in our mind is that are there any linear transformation linear transformation in... Okay, so to solve on that, um, we let F from R to R be linear transformation. Now, if you notice, um, your one here, the set containing one is already a basis for R. Now, if we let A equals F of 1, then for all X in R, um, we would have um, f of x equals f of x times 1, and that's equivalent to um, x of f of 1, and that's equivalent to x times a. Hence, f here is f sub a for some a in R. And so, um, our set of um, linear transformation from R to R over R is actually the set Fm from R to R defined by F sub M of X equals Mx. Your M is in R. That's it. Okay, so that's all for now and thank you so much for watching and um, we will still be continuing with the concept of linear transformation. So it's properties and characteristics. So we will have to discuss that, that on the next video. So thank you so much for watching guys. For those who are new to my channel, please don't forget to subscribe and um, say hi to my aglonima, by the way. And thank you. Have a great day.